Hi, this is Professor LaPuma of the New Jersey Institute of Technology recording for my technical communications class with the material drawn from my text, Fundamentals of Undergraduate Education and Learning. What we're going to look at now is some specific things that will help you as you create your package. And in particular, we're discussing the concept of graphics to understand what we mean by difference and change. So in the beginning, we need to understand what is graphics. And for us, there is this two-part thing. And the idea is that anything that you put onto a page is a graphic. Many people think of graphics as simply images or pictures or figures. And we'll explain what all of those are. If you look in the book, you can see a description of all that. But for us, anything that's put on the page, letters, symbols, they're graphics. Compared to that, what we term the other part, which is then the white space, is the background, anything that's there that doesn't have graphics on it, and is the balance between the empty space and the written space that you're really trying to work with to increase the quality of comprehension of what you're trying to say as you create your package. So the first thing that you want to think about is that there is a foreground and a background in what you're doing. And usually the foreground is considered the images or the graphics are there, and the background is the image behind. And part of the reason you'll insert backgrounds that aren't white is so that you can have the whole process understood better and give yourself a feel for the whole presentation. But what you have to realize is it's the difference between the, the level of ability to see difference between background and foreground that we're trying to recognize that makes things more visible and able to be seen. So what we really want to think about then too is besides just this difference between background and foreground, there's also the ability to space things on the page. You're given a particular size and where you place things horizontally and vertically make a difference for how we read or interpret what's going on. And so horizontal and vertical spacing and placement is very important. And that distinction between what's the background and the foreground is really the, the most basic sets of tools that we'll be using to increase the quality of your packages. So the last thing we want to think about is that when we're discussing some terms, we're really going to look at the idea of difference and change, and then change is really static and dynamic. Now, difference for us is two individual states part one and part two, and you can see that from one to the other there was a difference. Change is an active process, and thus when we talk about difference, we're really talking about static things, something that shows a difference from, even if it's the, from the background, it's static meaning it doesn't move. Dynamic tends to relate more with change, the idea that you can, with modern tools, make things move, make things change live in the thing, and so that difference gives you a great amount of power to interpret what you want to say in a way that your target will get much more of a full and immersive experience. And so what we want to do is begin to look at a little diff bit about this idea of difference and change. So first of all, we want to look at you know, how you can actually do that with the tools of today. And I'm just going to do something extremely simple with PowerPoint to give you the idea. So the first thing we want to look at is static emphasis. Now, when that piece came in, you were seeing the change, and so that's different. But now it sits there and doesn't move, and so the difference is from the background to the foreground. If we want to add more emphasis, we can change the static look of this. So if I change my font or my font color, I am making a change in this, but the only thing that the person who's viewing this will see if it was a Printing document or a document that didn't have the animation in it would be now the difference from the graphic that we've placed on the page to the background that we have. So if we go further than this, we have dynamic emphasis. As you can see, the moving in as we're doing is a change. It's not just a static image, it's dynamic. And with the work of PowerPoint, you can really do some impressive things. So as I'm talking, this thing moving draws your attention to it. You can make color changes in the same way. One thing you have to be careful of is, if you notice now, after the change is completed, there's still a level of difference from the background to the foreground, but because of the color scheme I chose, it becomes difficult to actually distinguish the words that end up being because as much as change can draw your attention, it's that difference between background and foreground that 
persists and is what we're trying to get so that when you create your package, that persistent idea is what we're looking for. So again, dynamic emphasis, if continued throughout, can keep the attention. But once the dynamic aspect is done, you have to make sure that that static emphasis and the difference you've created is sufficient to make your message come through clearly with your package. So now, we just want to talk about some basic elements. And what I presented here is a number of different color schemes that we do. Um, what we're trying to think about as you think about color, font, size, and style is that certain color schemes work better and bring certain messages, but they don't work alone. You have to understand how they're to be used. For example, if you print out something and the text is written in a grayscale, it'll come out printed very lightly. Or if you try to photocopy, certain photocopiers cannot pick up blues and reds as well, and so they may just disappear. Um, the best contrast is in the bottom right is yellow on black or black on yellow. That's the best contrast. The worst contrast is a thin red on black. It's very difficult to read beyond that. However, we do have a worse contrast, which some of you may not realize. It's the same color on the same background. So if your foreground and background color are identical, it becomes invisible. And the only way to see it is to change one or the other. So if we keep all these words the same, but change the color of our background, which is our white space, suddenly you can see that the word change appeared very brightly in white. But in the previous slide, it was invisible. Now the black one, which was previously able to be read, is now invisible. You have to be careful, however, because sometimes you choose a mid-ground such that more of them come out and it makes the whole thing difficult to read because this image, the color may be very difficult to read or in some cases you choose too bright a color so that your target, after a while, their eyes get pained. And so that you also wash out certain parts of emphasis because now instead of at the bottom right having a yellow with black thing, I have a little box and the foreground and background are very similar. So these are some basic elements. Let's get off this page because it may be hard for you to read. Um, other people want their background to be an image, literally something which relates to their presentation or their document. And as a result, they have a beautiful image. But again, this is still background. Your content is layered on top of this and has to be readable. And one thing you'll notice is that change is actually something that occurs in a static document if the background changes as it moves. The color at the top of this page is lighter than the color at the bottom. And so the same font throughout would automatically bring with it a change because the contrast that exists changes as you read the page. Now, last but not least, sometimes the image you pick is difficult to write against. This image might be a perfectly appropriate for a presentation about fall leaves or trees or anything like that, the park that this is taken from. However, because of the very busy nature of the picture and the images, it becomes difficult to read so that in order to see a good set of the text, you may have to put it into a block, but if you put a block as these ones on the bottom, you block the image. And so you have to balance your decisions about what background image to use with the content in the foreground and the choice of font styles. To help you with this, programs like PowerPoint have come up with automated systems for creating a template where the text color will actually change as you shift from one background to the other. However, if you are not aware of that and don't know, know what to do or what you're doing, sometimes these programs can cause a difficulty with how you present, what you're presenting, and how your material is shown on the screen. So for us, the important thing to remember is that difference and change are both vital parts of creating your package because they allow the content to be read most easily and the message to be gained most effectively. So thank you.